Hello, welcome, welcome. This is Comic Strategy Kings from Queens. As you know, I'm Comic Strategy. <laughs> this is JS. We're going to get this beginning thing right one day. <laughs> I keep butchering it. Uh, so, yeah, so we're going to continue on with our series of the Council of Dayton. I'm laying the foundation. And today's show, we are discussing, and yeah, I just I completely just blew my mind, baggage. Not a little bit of baggage, but typically it's a lot of baggage. We think it's a little baggage, but it's a lot. So we're going to start and have a few questions about baggage. Um, you ready for this? It's going to be a good one. So, all right, question number one. What is the hardest part of a breakup? Well, um, for me speaking for myself, um, the hardest part of a breakup is... She's speaking loud, too. Uh, got a little background noise. Is... It would have to be being that person that you are familiar with, the person that you are with. Uh, just change for me. Big change for me has always been the hardest part of a breakup. You know what I mean? Because you got to, you know, you really stuck. You know, some men, sometimes we stuck in our ways and we stuck yeah. doing a lot of stuff that we used to do. So when that person is gone, you know what I mean? You got to change it up and get into your old routine again. So a lot of times that's always been the hardest part for me about a breakup is just the change, you know? Yeah. Is that it? That's your answer? Yeah, that's my answer. That's Not a bad answer. one. <coughs> so for me, the hardest part of a breakup is obviously the hurt feelings that come with it. And there's always some why answers or what could have been regrets or all kinds of things that become part of the process of moving on that usually there is no there's there's not a whole lot of information on how do you deal with that process we kind of got to do it on our own um, so so you know you left somebody and then you you go to somebody else and say hey so and so is no longer in my life and they give you the worst advice Ever. Let's go get right. Let's go drinking. Let's go get somebody else immediately, etc., 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 etc. So that's the worst part, in my opinion, of a breakup. Question number two: yeah. What of the baggage you have is good for the next possible relationship? Well, anything that you learn from your relationship, uh, and anything that you learned uh, to add with that some negative stuff that happened in the past relationships and you taking that into your new relationship and basically seeing if that if that worked for you. Um, like a lot of times um, you go into a relationship and you know you know we all have baggage. Everybody has baggage and they all have, we all have these preconceived notions about the other person going into it and just about men and women, you know what I mean? Uh, we have these notions like, all right, I don't trust women, or you know what I mean. So this new relationship, let's say, for example, I had a hard time with that. I, I still don't pretty really much trust women as far as I can see them, but uh, uh, but my thing is, some women that you are with can make that a better thing. You know what I mean? And you know, and you end up you need to trust them. So depending on what y'all been through, you know what I mean? This kid make it better or worse, you know what I mean? That baggage that you came into it with, you know? Well, my opinion, none of the baggage from the past relationship is good for the next relationship. You need resolution, some form of closure, some form of moving forward. Is there something that can be learned? Cool. Baggage? No. You don't learn from baggage. You have to heal from baggage. That's like saying, I got shot. We're going to learn from getting shot. We're going to learn how to duck. No. What you're going to do is go to, go get your surgery, get healed, and then you're going to move on as if you've never been shot. And that's the key. But, but unfortunately, you know, people don't forget. They don't forget. You know, well, and, you know, and, you, and you know what? And a lot of times, you know, I've, uh, you know, a lot of women say, uh, you know, I took a year off to try to heal from that last relationship, and that's a and that's a good thing. You know what I mean? That's a good yeah. thing. Um, but when y'all get down there in the trenches of that relationship, and it's going, it's going bad for that time. 
you know, that baggage sometimes comes out that closet and and you like See, that's damn, I mean, you she like, fully healed. Man. You like, yeah, you like, where did this come from? You know what I mean? Where did this come from? This has to be something that you've been through in your past, but you know what I mean? Hey, but you know, same thing. Do it, do it too. You know what I mean? Do it, do it too. We got baggage too. You know, so, we got a lot of baggage. That's yeah. part of the problem. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, what is the difference between baggage and precautions? The reason why I ask this question mm -hmm. is what a lot of people tell me is, well, I had to take that stuff, learn from it, and move yeah. forward. Yeah. Um, my last couple relationships, that's what I was told. But then um, something would happen, mm -hmm. and then they would lean on what the past person did, use yeah. that as an assessment to say, hey, you're doing this again. I'm like, mm, no, it's not. Yeah. Not even the same thing. And I'm saying that on both sides of the plane. So men do it, women do it. So what of baggage, what is the difference between baggage and precautions? Um, well, you know, I look at it as baggage. It's almost like these preconceived notions that we've had uh, and, and what we've been through. You know, we, we all come in with baggage. Um, but I think your baggage can sometimes help your precautions of stuff that you know, that you feel for of and that you don't want to go back into again. So I think I think both of them go hand in hand. Um, I don't think, I think you have these precautions because of what you've been through, you feel me? So, um, so I mean, because look, if I look at it, if it was somebody that I was with that was untrustworthy to me, um, I have that baggage of, from that previous relationship, but I'm going into this new one with precautions of looking at the signs or, you know, or like, for example, um, I, I look for craziness now in a different way than I used to. You understand? Don't be crazy. But, and so I look for it. I look, crazy I, stuff, I look for it because look, everybody's crazy, men and uh -huh. women. But you know, you got to look at the levels. You got to look at the level. What the level levels of crazy. crazy. Levels of okay. craziness. Everybody know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> levels of craziness. Because you see, because you know, you, you've been with somebody, you've been with a new person, and you're like, oh, damn. You know, uh, she's not as crazy as she was. So, you know. Levels you, of crazy. Level, levels of crazy. Or a woman, for example. You've been out there, you've had a dude, he's stalking you, doing crazy shit. You're like, yo, what the hell is they doing? You understand? But then, but. Being with him, you may even see that Steve or Donovan you was with wasn't so damn crazy. You understand what I'm saying? Because people raise that bar of craziness. You understand? So, <laughs> so it's real. Hey, it's real, y'all. It's real. I'm uh, about that. I have to disagree with you on this one. Hey. But hey. so the difference between baggage and garbage is this. Excuse me. Man, I said baggage and garbage. I was like, yeah, baggage and garbage kind of go, go together. Um, so <laughs> baggage and precautions. My bad. Yeah. Um, so precautions are things you look for in the dating process in an effort to have an overall positive experience. Baggage is past hurt that hasn't been resolved that you use or whether it be purposely or not purposely in your current and future relationships that can only bring a negative response or reaction. That is the difference between precautions and baggage. So baggage comes through like a precaution because it kind of seems like, well, you know, I'm going to make sure that the next dude I date or the next woman I date, um, she don't walk around with knives. That don't necessarily mean it. I mean, you probably should date the person that's, that's carrying knives, she's, but she's crazy. But that doesn't necessarily mean. I mean, maybe she sells knives. Maybe she's a chef. You know, I, I know a chef. She carries knives all the time. She ain't gonna use them. So, I uh, mean, it, it, there there is a different aspect between precautions and baggage. So, it is what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna yeah. ask a question for first, just okay. you know, break up a little bit. So, okay, go ahead. on the first date, how much of the past do you bring up? In my opinion, you don't want to bring any of it up. Um, the more you bring up, the more proof that you have shown, or you are showing that you haven't 
resolved past relationship hurt. And that's a problem. So you're on this date, and you're talking about the last dude, and the dude behind that, and the dude behind that. Now, here's the thing. Men are taught on that first date, the woman is going to talk about the past dude that treated her like shit, because he did. And that's not to be understated. But as a person trying to move on in the relationship, you want to be at a point where you don't have to bring up all of the people before this this current date that did you dirty, did you wrong, even if it's 100% true. Somewhere along the line, you want little of that. Not saying you shouldn't bring it up, but it shouldn't be a major part of the day. It should be from, hey, it's my first day since such and such. He really did this, this, and this to me. Is one that you know. So I, I, I feel some sort of way, but I, I've healed from this. I've grown from this. I've done, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm moving forward, and hopefully, you know, this goes somewhere. That's good. It's bad when you're two hours into the day, and, and Tyrone came in my life, and blah, blah, blah. That's not a good thing, because the man's going to be like, this woman cray for him. Or the guy's going to be like, I can manipulate her. Or the guy's going to be like, aha, I can get her, because she's used to this kind of treatment. So you want to make sure you present yourself as someone who has healed or gone through the healing process, because that's going to scare the punk ass dude. That's going to put fear in the fake nigga that tries to come in your life and try to ruin your life as well. So, and it's going to show the good dude that you're dating or trying to be on a date with that, okay, this woman, she understands what happened in the past, in the past, she's moved on, even though some of those things were tough for you to deal with. So, your answer? Um, I would say, um, no, you don't talk about your past on the first date. Um, you want him to think you just got to earth yesterday. Uh, and, and and I mean that. I mean because if you you can, you do not uh uh-uh. I've I've learned I've learned this. You don't want to bring up too much of your past. Yeah. Um because them preconceived notions that they they start bringing up they you know what happened in your last relationship you know because yeah. as many dates as you might go on a lot of times uh. Yeah. You're not gonna hear the real on that first date. You know what I mean. Yeah. So you might as well just leave that to yourself, and y'all talk about each other and nothing about y'all past relationships because that can um, that can come back to haunt you. You know what I mean. So, Agree. Yeah, don't, that can come back to haunt you. So you don't want to talk about that. I agree with that. So, so now we're gonna start talking about. Okay, we've kind of discussed baggage. It's a problem. What do we do about it? Well, we have to go through a healing process. That's everyone. So, first question. Where do you start with... Let me read the question first before I just start just talking. <laughs> Where do you start with... What do you start with? When dealing with... Who wrote this question out? Okay, it must be me. So, my bad. Let me try to read this the way it's supposed to be read. When dealing with baggage, where do you start first? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was one. I was like, okay, where are we going? With this? Um, when dealing with baggage, you mean? Do you mean on the aspect of trying to heal, or? Yes, trying to heal. Okay. Um, well, first you have to recognize that it's baggage, and and, and recognize that you do have it, because a lot of people don't like to admit. It. They don't like to admit it, uh, or at least to the opposite sex. Uh, That's an excellent point. You know what we, mean? We quickly yeah. are like, I ain't hurt. He yeah, ain't yeah, hurt no, me. Nobody, I'm good. Yeah, nobody wants to be. I was done be, with him anyway. I was done with her anyway. Yeah, nobody like, wants to be on, that man. person. They don't want to admit to it. I would tell you, yeah. hey, look, I tell you right back, yeah, I got baggage. Who doesn't? But and I can admit it. But a lot of times people don't want to admit it. Um, so that's where I, I believe you need to start with just the admitting that. Admitting that you have baggage. Yeah. That's a good. One. Good. One. So for me. Uh, my answer to that question, which I'm going to read because I wrote it down, I thought about this after doing a little research. First of all, you got to understand where the source is coming from. So in other words, ask yourself the question if you can, and then if you have the relationship or kind of relationship where you can ask the person to broke up with you why they moved on, great. 
but only do that in a reasonable amount of time. So give it, give it a week. If you you, you pose the question, um, give him give him a week to answer the question. If he doesn't answer in the week, then that is part of your process. So part of your press process is you're not going to get resolution from him. You got to go through the process yourself. And understanding that point actually helps the healing process because now you're not waiting on somebody else to try to help you move forward. So that's what happens to, to a lot of people is they get in this relationship, it ends strangely or abruptly. You know, like, that didn't make any sense. I thought we were going in the right direction. And then you can't get a hold of the person. The person ghosts you. So then you're like, oh, what? So you have all these questions and you're wondering, maybe it was because I said this or maybe it was I did that. And you really don't know. So then you at least ask the question. You say, hey, why is this over? You're not getting the answer. Fine. So now you understand, okay, so part of my healing process is I'm doing this on my own without the, the variable of X. X meaning whatever the actual reason is this person left. Which also says this, that person does not have enough respect for you to tell you why they left. Now, he may, have, he may be doing it because he's afraid. He may be doing it because he really don't want to tell you. He may be doing it because he, is, he wants to avoid the question altogether or dealing with the situation. But at the end of the day, he does not have enough respect for you to tell you why. Whatever that means. So that's part of your process. You keep moving forward. Yeah. So question two. Why is it important to deal with baggage before you start dating again? Well, it's important to deal with it uh, because it's helping you. It's, it, it helps everything with you. You understand? And once you address it, uh, it will help you. Um, and you need to take time before you start dating again. But that's easier said than done. You know what I mean? We are human. We get lonely. You know what I mean? And so a lot of times we had just hopped right back into it, but you realize that you're a scarred person. And so yeah. most of the time it's two scarred people going back into it and then wondering why it's not working again. So, uh, you know, I, I think you just need to take time before you get back into, you know, trying to date. Well, ideally, the reason why I do is so you can, you can completely heal from the process. The reality is, we don't necessarily completely heal from the process. So that part of that process of at least acknowledging what is the issue so that you know what's bad. So when something happens and it looks like that particular piece of baggage, you can say, wait, hold up. Maybe he's not doing this. Maybe this is just me tripping. Let me do my research. So that you don't put something on your next relationship that's not even there. Second, um, there is a level of forgiveness that is required Forgiveness helps you. Now, it may not be fair to forgive the person that did you wrong, but it's not about them. It's about being able to let go and move forward. So, you're able to do that when you understand forgiveness is for you. If you can't forgive, you are hurting yourself for not only, not only yourself, but your current and future relationships. Sometimes even your friendships, sometimes even your family um, relationships, uh, familial relationships, uh, can be affected by it. Um, baggage can go into your work. It can go into your network because you start seeing things under this this broken lens of of hurt, and so you don't see things clearly anymore. If you don't at least address it to some degree and it happens so suddenly because you'll be two three four relationships down the road before you realize i have this issue i'll just say for myself um and it's not even a legitimate issue but for a while i was dealing with the situation where i felt like people would just abandon me where um like for example i would be in a great relationship and all of a sudden bam it would be over it's happened only like a couple times in my life, but I would use that because I never truly addressed the baggage and think every single woman is going to do this to me eventually. It makes absolutely no sense. That's not in thought, but this is what I carried because I didn't address it until we, to like three or four relationships later. So I would I would have like this wall up. I would have this like thought process. Okay, 
I'm off will leave before it gets worse. So um, I've had to learn from that. And, and I'm not even saying I'm completely healed from it. I'm just saying that it was part of my baggage. So. Okay, so um, question number three. How do men deal with baggage? Bam. Uh, <laughs> I'm about to give the real on this one. How do we deal with baggage? How do men deal with baggage? Sometimes we um, we might call you crazy, um, and, and and you know um, it's all baggage regardless of the stuff that we've been through, and uh, you know just like my certain stuff with me sometimes not trusting women a lot. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just from stuff that we've been through in the past that. You've seen stuff that might have happened or, or people lying or whatever and you're just like oh, i can't deal with this you know so now you go into everything thinking like oh she's lying anyway so let me just adapt off of this you understand what i'm saying so then you are adapting in your relationship or your friendship you have with people and you just think thinking she's lying so he's like okay everything is all good but that's just your way of coping with your own baggage you brought you brought this in. You understand? You brought this in. So then you think about her having her own baggage, thus starts all these damn problems. You know what I mean? So but, basically, what you're saying is we don't handle baggage very well as men. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, we do a poor job. We probably do way worse than women do when it comes to baggage. We're probably the worst when it comes to baggage. Not because, at all. Because typically, I mean, growing up, this is how we dealt with baggage. Relationships over. Let's find the next chick immediately. Bam! Let's get into those skins. Let's go out to the club, hit four or five chicks up. Bam! We've passed. We've moved on. We've proved to her. Huh. We've handled it. So then you're 25, 30 <laughs> type of relationships. It's like, oh man, I'm hurt. Like, it's, it's too late, man. You're, you're tapping this one and that one. Man, you got, now you got 20 more bags of baggage you got to deal with. So. Men typically have to deal with, um, I wouldn't say more baggage than women, but more different variants of baggage because we're not just dealing off the one relationship, we're dealing off of 20 or 25. Because, you know, when, when we hear our boys' relationships always like, man, you know what? Fuck her, check this out. We're going to the club tonight. It's time for you to, you know, do what you do, man. Yeah. We hook him up, he hooks up, bam, 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 eight relationships later. Damn. Still miss so and so. You're just like, oh. so it's a bad thing. We handle baggage poorly. But you know, don't get it twisted. Women do the same thing. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even hate. Well, they so, do. They do the same. Do not. Do not think women don't do a lot of things that men do. Well, see, here's the thing. So you bring up a valid point. I, I wouldn't say it's the same as men. But women have taken on some of this attitude of, you know, X one to the next one. And it's not a good thing for men. It's not a good thing for women. Um, but I don't think that was a general rule. I think women have done that or will, women will do that so, sometimes. But not to the extent of men. Men go haywire. They just, well, I mean, a lot of times when we hurt, when we hurt, um, you know, we can, you know, we'll lose it, but, you know, it's still the same, still pain, you know what I mean? It's still pain. As they say, hurt people hurt people, so. Hurt people hurt know. people, we know this, but the point is. <laughs> well, but okay. I'm just not going to put it all on men, though. It, it works both ways. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, so I understand that this is a men's talk to geared towards yeah, women. Yeah. We understand not every guy is evil or condescending, that kind of thing, but. Typically, the fellas, this is what we do with baggage. It is what it is. Yeah, right. Okay, so question number four is kind of a long one, so I'll, 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 I'll read it twice. Okay. What three parts of baggage that people use as a lesson in the next relationship that in reality kills the next relationship? So I'll repeat that. What three parts of baggage that people use as a lesson in the next relationship that when in reality actually kills the next relationship. 
I'll let you go with that one first, brother. Okay, okay. So, these are the three things I would say. Not to trust no one. Expect the worst. All men are cheaters. So, those would be the three. Um, and you can give me all the statistics you want, all the facts you want, and I mean, they're legitimate. I mean, uh, they're out there. People are cheating at a high rate. People are lying at a high rate. You know, you go on Facebook and you'll hear somebody's post. That's why I don't trust nobody. I just all person I trust myself. They're like, damn, that person has baggage. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, reality, truth be told, no trust, no relationship. Now, it may be cool for now, but as time goes on, that trust is going to reap its ugly head and kill the relationship. These things are like knives. They cut slowly and just cut your body in half, completely obliterating everything. So, no trust thing, all men are cheaters thing. So, you know, all, now you're insecure because, you know, so-and-so so and so did you wrong many times. Well, that doesn't mean the next guy's going to do that. So to bring that into the relationship, it's just setting yourself up for failure. So uh, those would be my thing. I mean, I tell you the truth, I, I I agree on those three, but I don't know where you got the uh, all men cheat. I know especially black men don't well, cheat. Well, they don't. They don't. <laughs> yeah, black men don't cheat. Um, <laughs> So I don't know where you got that statistic from. Uh, but black men don't cheat. Um, uh, you know. But I just wanted to let y'all know that. Uh, yeah. Some brothers, they, they don't cheat. You know, there's, there's a lot of good brothers out here. There's um, a lot of good men out there. Yeah. But, yeah. but uh, the going narrative is... But yeah, I, I, I understand. Yeah, I, I understand how that's when they... when You know, a lot of times when women get out, you know... You know, men, all men are dogs, they cheat, and, but that's assuming that that relationship ended that way, um, you know, sometimes it might be the other way around, you know, so, uh, you know, but I agree with you, I agree. Question five, what elements make it possible to get rid of baggage? Mm. What elements make it possible, possible to, get to get rid of baggage? Yeah. Um. Well, I think you basically, like I was saying before, man, just recognizing and recognizing the problems and the situation, and being able to, uh, and which is hard. I don't know. If a lot of women ain't gonna forgive the person that they are with or or did it to them, but they should try. Wait, say that part again. You try, you try to forgive. The no, before that, you yeah. say women are what? You forgive the person, but you know, <laughs> you can try. You know what I mean? You're talking about the past relationship. Yeah, the past one. Yeah, yeah, you can try. But I mean, come on, that's that. Hey. Well, I mean, really, if you don't, then you're allowing that relationship to get to the next. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I have been in, uh, I have been in relationships where, uh, you know, people might come back years later and be like, you know. Uh, you know, we could have went about it a different way. You know what I mean? I think a lot of times it takes time to sit back and and, and collect your thoughts for your own self and, and you know, and be like, damn, I could have went this around. You know, I was I was pretty fucked up. You know what I mean? So I was in a bad place. So, you know, sometimes it's good to, to have that talk after a couple of years. You know what I mean? So you but, have really not given us any elements. Hey. <laughs> Hey, okay. take what you want. You know, hey, <laughs> hey, you, you gotta be. Well, you I, know, I guess you gave the one. Yeah, yeah people okay. gotta just know how to, you know, reflecting. Say sorry, yeah. Be, okay, be yeah, so reflecting. And, so, and, and, okay. and just have the forgiveness part of it. Forgiveness, you okay. So, yeah. so I will laugh, those actually mine too. So, yeah. honest reflection, which is typically a self reflection. Um, if you're able to bring other people in that reflection, that's great because they can show you things that you maybe not be able to see or you are ignoring. Um, and then the other aspect is forgiveness. You have to do the forgiveness piece. Now, I'm not saying do that right away, but the sooner you're able to, the better off you're going to be. You have to get to a point of forgiving somebody. I didn't say forget. I didn't say, like, next day you you um, go out on a date. I'm saying, no, this person did you wrong. Forgive that person. Move forward. And then be honest with yourself on the things you could have done better, whatever those may be. 
All right, so with that, um, let's finish up with a little Mars versus Venus, yes, Dear indeed. JS style. Yes. All right. All right. Dear JS, Mars versus Venus. Yes. All right. Dear JS, number one, women want clarity when a relationship ends. What about men? Well, men want a new woman. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> that is very true. We don't care about clarity. I mean, we do, but we don't. We're just like, I'm, and I'm not saying this is good at all. I'm just saying that's what men do. That's what I'm saying. Um, so we want a new woman, um, and, and we're less likely to seek closure unless we really like the woman and we just get dumped. It's like, what is happening here? Yeah. I thought she was the one, and then. We were the problem. We don't care about clarity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unfortunately. You know what I mean? We don't care about the clarity part about it. We just like, hey, you know, uh, I guess I'm going to move on. You know, but it, that's if, you know, but if we messed it up, no, we just don't. Yeah. Uh, uh, number two, I hear I hear men when dating talk a lot about women at the same time. Why? Hmm. I hear men when dating talk about women. Uh, because as, as, as men, you know, we share our war stories, um, good or bad, you know what I mean? That's just what we do. I believe women... Talk about women or talk to a lot of them. Oh, uh, you see. Oh, you think it's talk... Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, that's not... I don't... I, I think that's a stereotype. No, we don't talk to a lot of women after we... Uh, I mean, we might try to put ourselves back into the game and the rotation at that time. If a relationship is over, but uh, maybe maybe when I was younger, but you know, in my uh, in my forties, no, nah, if I you know I wouldn't I wouldn't do that, but you know sometimes that's what we do, especially younger men. So there is some legitimacy to that. Um, when you do the research uh, in terms of like internet studies, what they say is men have to play the numbers game. So. We don't just talk to one person. We gotta talk to a hundred. That's what they tell us to do. True. Um, and the reason is because men typically are the ones that initiate the action. Um, so men deal with rejection ten times to one. Uh, because you know, if you're the one initiating the action and you get, you know, you get another guy, move on to the next one. Um, so in the dating process they teach us okay so if you talk to 10 you'll probably get three yeses and you'll have one day that's decent so after that it just goes haywire from there so if you talk to less than 10 people at the same time then your chances of finding someone that you're interested in go, go way down so that's part of the reason why we do it um, second reason is because growing up it was considered cool to talk to more than one woman. So that's part of the reason why. Uh, I'm not saying it's good, but that's just answering the question. Uh, my brother has to be in his 20s. Uh, as you get older, you talk to yeah. less, but yeah. the percentages don't go away. Yeah, no doubt. Typically the no same. Doubt. I mean, yeah. So, yeah, no doubt. man. <laughs> that's true, though. Hey. All right. All right. Number three. True or false? Men don't want to get married because it makes them feel trapped. Um, uh, false. False. Um, no, that, that isn't the reason why I wouldn't want to get married. If I had a reason, it's because I, I don't want to be arguing. You know what I mean? But, but that's if that was the case. But what about you, brother? I would say false. If a man does not want to marry you, it's because he does not think you're the one. Period. There's no other reason. Yeah, that's true. You aren't the one. All right. Number four. Women want to be honest and are honest. <laughs> what about men? <laughs> I like well, I like how she put. Women want to be honest and are honest. Yeah. Oh my God. Who wrote this? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, hey. That is, uh, no, uh, but no, I don't, I do not believe, uh, that all women are honest. Um, 
sorry, uh, uh, men, as we get older, we get more honest, you know what I mean? But men lie too, you know what I mean? It's, hey, it's both men and women lie, so I'm sorry. We both lie. We human. Well, I do believe that the women are honest is a little overstated. Uh, because, you know, there's the whole age thing, which is always funny. Women never tell us her age. Um, if a woman says, how do I look in this dress? She wants to hear you say you look amazing. Unless there's just something egregious going on with it. Um, so I would say this. Men tell women what they want to hear. Um, sometimes that's truthful. Sometimes that's not. Overall, if men were honest, they would say things that would make women cry. Um, so men lie a lot. Uh, now there are honest men out there. I would consider myself one of them. But, you know, I'm not in a relationship. So how's that working out for me? Uh, <laughs> so the reality of the situation is, um, it's kind of a catch-22. In the United States, 94% of people lie consistently. Those are the statistics. So, everybody lying. I'm not saying it's good or right, but it's hard to find someone that's going to be honest. And then how honest are they? It's a little, a little, little, little white lie. Is that, is that honesty? He only said a little lie. It's still a lie. So, um, we can have a discussion just on lying all together. My opinion on the lying thing is I think women lie more than they admit. Almost definitely. And men don't lie as much as you think. Yeah. Hey, um, and I think that would be an you, accurate. You, you hit that one right on the head. Yeah. I, I have to agree with you. You hit that one right on the head. Yeah. I mean, because I think they expect us to lie so much. And we we telling the truth. And you're like, what? I'm telling you the truth. I think they it's a crazy thing because if you do find that that man and he tells you everything you want to hear, the first thing you're thinking of is red flags. I mean, right? And he might be telling the truth, so you're like, ah, yeah. ah, that is this. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna discuss how do we deal with that. So, yeah. so yeah, it's actually a good question, although it was kind of interesting how it went down. Yeah. Yeah. All right, number five, true or false? Women are more trusting than men. Um, um, no, no, um, I think what we, I think what we just don't, you know, as men, a lot of times we just don't know all the lies that women tell, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, we, but the thing is this, we get caught easier. You understand what I'm saying? We get caught easier. So our lies look like we lying all the damn time. You know what I mean? Because yeah, point blank, you know, a lot of our lies aren't that damn bright. So, um. We get caught easier, so we look like doing our lies. And so men, a lot of times, we don't pay attention to the women's lies because we too worry about the lie we didn't told and feeling guilty about it. So it's like, nah, man, hey, hey, women are more honest. I mean, you know, you know what though? When a woman loves you, she generally loves you. You know what I mean? And so, so I think the probability of lying, you know, I think as you get older, the lying stops. You know a lot you know but really yeah you I, think that? So. I think so i think if you start lying in your 20s you're lying in your 50s i mean everybody lies shit. you understand i think if you're generally honest younger yeah. you become more honest as time goes along because you just realize it ain't worth because, lies because of damn but if you're bad. a liar in the beginning you're gonna be a liar for but, a long time if a bill collector called your ass right now you will lie quick <laughs> as hell you understand what I'm saying? No, I'll be like, I don't got it. So what are you gonna do? Cut your shit off. Bye. You understand? I'll hey, you, hey, you will lie quickly about it if it happens to do something. So I mean, so everybody lies, but it's just all about like you were talking uh, about the little white lie or the, you know what I mean? But if you lying about, you know, uh, oh, I don't have a girlfriend or some such shit like that, then yeah, that that can, you know, that's that's, or some something like that. Or I don't. Where were you at? Over my homeboy house. You know what I'm saying? Those type of lies that I'm talking about. As you get older, those stop. You know what I mean? I don't even think that's the case. I you think, know? no, I just, I know too many old 
raggedy dudes that they still trying to be players and they they, they lie to everybody. And it's like, dude. Yeah, I mean, but it's the same thing with um. <clears throat> don't get it twisted, man. Women, they lie too. So this is my my belief in that question. Mm-hmm. Um, trust is at a premium period. So uh, I think overall, I, I think I don't think there is a true or false in this. I think women and men have trust issues um, in general. So you need to find someone that does not, and that's not as easy as it sounds. Um, and you know, part of that is because maybe you have trust issues, or maybe you have this belief of what trust looks like. Uh, so I think you need to have a trust conversation on that first date. And we'll discuss that on, on the next show. But uh, I, I do think um, trust is at a premium. So, so yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people should have a conversation about trust on the first date. I you, think you have I, to have that. See, I, you I, you I have think, to have a little, lot better. I think that should be part of the foundation. You know, so yeah, it's like, it okay, a lot what does trust look like to you? So, and then we'll discuss it next show. So, yeah. um, it's going to be one of our discussions how to deal with the trust issue because my true belief, and I believe this wholeheartedly, no trust, no relationship. So, you might be in a relationship, but you really are not because you're too busy looking at somebody's phone, too busy checking out the way someone looks at somebody, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's just it's completely unnecessary part of a relationship and we're going to discuss it so that being said are there any other questions that is all brother this is the man's talk show geared towards women i'm common strategy this is js this is kings for queens we'll be back next week with another amazing show talking about the council of dating and laying that foundation and we're going to deal with trust issues we're also going to talk about um we're going to start formulating what it looks like to be um, on that first date, the cautions, the kind of things that you got to deal with in terms of uh, a relationship. So uh, we're also going to talk about um, should you be single and satisfied? Yes, no. A lot of people say yes, some people say no. Um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about sealing the foundation, what seals the foundation of the date, and after we talk about the things that need to be in that. Um, and then prepare for success. So those are going to be the next few shows. We're going to have uh, some other guest hosts coming in to talk about a couple other things as well. So, again, thank you for watching. This is Comic Strategy, JS, Kings for Queens, the men talk show, the men's talk show, geared towards and for the benefit of women. Have a good rest of your evening, and we'll talk soon. Don't forget to subscribe, like, all that good stuff. And um, post underneath the video with some questions. We will answer you. And uh, we thank you for watching. And I'm going to stop this now because I'm just going to keep rambling. So yeah. you don't want all that. You know, you don't want to do all that. Uh. <laughs>